When you receive your freezer delivery, examine the exterior packaging for physical damage while the carrier's representative is present. If you notice any damage, carefully unpack and inspect the unit and all its accessories immediately. If there is no exterior damage, unpack and inspect the equipment within five days of delivery. If you find damage, keep the packing materials and report the damage to the carrier right away. Do not return goods to the manufacturer without written authorization. When submitting a claim for shipping damage, request that the carrier inspect the shipping container and equipment. Remove the exterior cardboard wrap by undoing the plastic retaining clips. You can collapse and store the exterior cardboard pieces for future use. Next, remove the foam blocks holding the inner cardboard skirt together. Unwrap the inner cardboard skirt and separate the pieces for storage. You should also remove the cardboard cap, plastic bags, and covers and keep the packing materials for an alternate use. Here, you'll notice that the freezer is attached to a pallet with shipping brackets. Remove the four bolts that connect the brackets to the pallet, and then remove the brackets. The pallet contains ramp boards to help roll the freezer off the pallet. These are the two boards with slotted ends located on the top face of the pallet. Remove the screws that secure the ramp boards to the pallet, then slide them out from underneath the freezer. Line up the slotted ends of the ramp board with the ramp brackets on the side of the pallet, making sure that the support blocks on the ramp boards are oriented toward the floor to provide necessary support. Make sure enough people are present to help safely move the freezer from the pallet. After lining up the casters with the ramp boards, slowly roll the freezer off the pallet while bracing the pallet on the opposite side to prevent both from tipping. Once removed from the pallet, shift the freezer into place, allowing proper clearances around the sides, top, and back of the unit. Be sure to install the unit in a level area with a minimum of eight inches of space above the unit and on both sides, plus six inches in the back. To help ensure proper clearance at the back of the unit, two metal spacing standoffs are included in a bag in the interior of the freezer. These are screwed into the back of the unit to keep it away from the wall and at the proper distance. After the standoffs are installed, remove the power cord from the zip ties. Please keep the metal bracket, which is located around the jack end of the power cable. Attach the jack end of the cable to the back of the unit and secure the metal casing to the back of the freezer with two screws. This will keep the power cable in place so it doesn't accidentally come loose during operation. To start the freezer, plug it into a power outlet and turn the power switch on. You can find the switch on the back right side of the freezer. Once it's turned on, a startup procedure will begin on the screen. And when it's ready for operation, the temperature is shown. Once the initial startup procedures are complete, the freezer is almost ready for use. The only actions that remain are programming the alarm set points and activating the CO2 or LN2 backup system if installed. For instructions on backup settings and activating systems, refer to the user manual. To modify the control temperature set point, press the plus or minus button while the unit's temperature is displayed. Adjust the set point to your desired temperature and select the check mark button to save the new control set point. Please allow the freezer to operate at the desired temperature for a minimum of 12 hours before loading. Once this is complete, load the freezer one shelf at a time, beginning with the top shelf. After loading each shelf, allow the freezer to recover to the desired set point before loading the next. Repeat this process until the freezer is fully loaded.